So we are reading from uh, the second cant, uh, sorry, the tenth canto, chapter number three. Uh, wait, I'll just share the screen. We're going to do two verses today. So that's going to be verse fifty and verse fifty-one. Okay, I, I believe it's visible to everyone on the screen, right? Okay, great. Okay, so I'll just uh, read the verse and the translation. This is Canto 10, Chapter 3, verse number 50. Magho nivarsati asakrita yamajuna gambhirato ya ghajavor mi fenila Bhayanika Varta Shata Kulanadi Margam Dadao Sindhur Ivashriya Pate. So, translation Because of constant rain sent by the demigod Indra, the river Yamuna was filled with deep water, foaming about with fiercely whirling waves. But as the great Indian Ocean had formally given way to Lord Ramchandra by allowing him to construct a bridge, the river Yamuna gave way to Vasudev and allowed him to cross. So since this verse doesn't have a purpose, we're also going to do verse number um, 51. So it's Canto 3, chapter, uh, Canto 10, chapter 3, verse number 51. Nanda Vrajam Shorer Upetya Tatratan Gopan Prasuptan Upalabhya Nidraya Sutam yashoda shayane nidhayatat sutam upadaya punar grihan agat. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedan Swami Shila Prabhupada. When Vasudev reached the house of Nand Maharaj, he saw that all the cowherd men were fast asleep. Thus, he placed his own son on the bed of Yashoda, picked up her daughter, an expansion of Yogmaya and then returned to his residence, the prison house of Kamsa. Purport. Vasudev knew very well that as soon as the daughter was in the prison house of Kamsa, Kamsa would immediately kill her. But to protect his own child, he had to kill the child of his friend. Nan Maharaj was his friend, but out of deep affection and attachment for his own son, he knowingly did this. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that one cannot be blamed for protecting one's own child at the sacrifice of another's. Furthermore, Vasudev cannot be accused of callousness since his actions were impelled by the force of Yogmaya. Omagyanti Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpataru Vesha Kripa Sindhu Bhavacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vesna Vebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Kaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Ram Ram Rama Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our morning Bhagavatam class. I seek the blessings of all the seniors assembled here, specifically Arjun Prabhu, Adi Purush Prabhu. And I seek the blessings specifically of Shilesi Bhaktivedan Swami Shila Prabhupada and my seniors uh, by whose uh, blessings and realizations I'm going to share something that I've heard from them so far. So um, 
we see in the past, like in the past few verses, we have been seeing that Vasudev is carrying baby Krishna to Gokul and he's crossing the Yamuna little by little to reach Gokul. And as he's carrying Krishna to Gokul, his troubles are increasing. So in one sense, it might seem like going to Gokul is like kind of like going to Maya and coming to Maya as troubles are increasing. So obviously Vasudev's troubles are of a different kind because we know that there are two types of Maya. There is Yog Maya and there is Mahamaya. And a normal conditioned soul uh, who's under the grips of Mahamaya, he feels always the pain and suffering of this material world. Whereas a devotee, he might uh, seemingly be under some pain and suffering of this material world, but being under the influence of Yog Maya, who is actually an internal potency of uh, Krishna, a pure devotee is always feeling bliss and ecstasy in serving the Lord and carrying out the mission of the Lord. For example, we have um, the Pandavas who suffered so much, but internally they were always dedicated to Krishna. They were always remembering Krishna, chanting his glory, serving his mission. We have Prahlad Maharaj. Um, and so many more examples are there. So this is the kind of Maya, these are the kind of troubles that Vasudev is undergoing. So it's very um, uh, important to note in this case that Yamuna is filled with water in general, like yeah, she, she's a water body, but specifically in, in this day, on this day when Lord Krishna appeared on this uh, earth in his manifest Leela, there was a lot of heavy downpour, there was thunder and lightning, and all of this was under the influence of yoga maya. And Indra also gets influenced and affected by yoga maya. So you see pure devotees or even mixed devotees, like Indra is considered more of a mixed devotee more than a pure, but we have even pure devotees as we will see uh, Vasudev as Yamuna Devi, who we are, who we are going to read, uh, uh, read about more in this verse. They, they all are pure devotees, but they also get under the influence of yoga maya. And they might seemingly do activities which will not be in their nature, but this is all to increase the pleasure of Krishna, to bring out their ecstasies, their devotion to Krishna. So you see, like uh, in this case, Indra, he was affected by yoga maya. So that is why all the small, small clouds, whoever were there, they all came together, okay? And they were kind of like conspiring along with Indra to have such a huge downpour of rainfall, so much of thunder and lightning, just to make the path of Vasudev all the more dramatic, all the more troublesome for him to reach, to cross Yamuna and to reach from Mathura to Gokul. And that's why Indra's name, if you see in this verse, uh, the first word is Maghoni, Maghoni Varsati. So Maghoni, uh, another name of Indra is Maghavan. Okay, uh, so Maghoni means heavy rain, rain like, you know, like the, like the trunks of elephant, you know, like pillars of rain, basically. That's how the kind of rain is, okay? So all these small, small clouds, which had dispersed over the time, they came together and they were with Indra and they were like contributing to this whole dramatic effect of huge downpour. So the Acharyas comment in a very nice way that uh, if a leader is strong, like how in this case, Indra, if Indra is as a strong leader is there, then even small, small soldiers can act very powerfully, very strongly. Indra is there, so even the small clouds are putting in their best effort. You know, even they are able to roar and shout and give a lot of thunder, lightning and pour so much of rain. So that's why we need good leaders in our society because a good leader is there, then um, even a normal individual can act to his best capacity. The next word in the verse is Asakrita which is constant. So Asakrita is, uh, is, is constant, strong. Sakrita means saintly and uh, Asakrita, which is there in this is constant, strong. So we see that the rain was constant, just like how it was happening during the Govardhan Leela. The rain was pouring down continuously. At that time it was seven days, seven nights, but this was just for one night, but it was like a continuous downpour of rainfall. So, and Vasudev is coming more closer and closer to the Yamuna. And if you see, Yamuna is referred to as Yam Anuja. So she's refers to as the 
Anuja. Anuja is the younger sister of Yam, who is Yamraj, the Lord of Death. So why is she referred to as the younger sister of Yamraj? Like, okay, we know her as a separate personality. We know her as Yamuna herself. Why does she need uh, to be referred to as a younger sister of Yamraj? And the reason is that because she was acting as fiercely and strongly and as ferociously as her brother Yamraj. And why was she so powerful on that day? The reason that Acharyas give is that because she was so happy that she was finally able to have darshan of her beloved Lord Krishna, that tears started to flow from her eyes. And that's why those tears were coming as kind of like huge waves, you know, as like whirlpools kind of like in her waters. Mm -hmm. And this was all in her anticipation of finally seeing of and hopefully touching the Lord. That was one of her main, you know, she wanted to touch the feet of the Lord, her beloved Lord, because she's one of the Ashtabharyas. She's one of the eternal associates, the eternal consort of uh, Lord Krishna. So just to speak very briefly about uh, Yamuna Devi, uh, so there are five personalities who can bestow us uh, love for Krishna, who can give us actually entry into Vrindavan to be more specific. So the first one is Govardhan. Then we have Lord Shiva, who's the Shetrapal. The third is the Vraj Dust, Vraj Raj. The fourth is Tulsi Devi. And the fifth is Yamuna Devi. So we have these five personalities who can give us entry into Vraj, specifically give us Vraj Prem, love for Krishna. And Yamuna is glorified in various scriptures. She flows directly from Golok Vrindavan. And yes, both Yamuna and Ganga come from the spiritual world, but um, Yamuna is considered 100 times more uh, lucky and more purifying than Ganga because Lord Krishna uh, himself personally performed several pastimes in the waters of Yamuna. No doubt, Ganga, Ganga Devi also got this benefit when Lord Chaitanya performed several pastimes in Mayapur. Um, so Yamuna Devi is originally Vishakha Sakhi. Vishakha Sakhi is one of the prominent Ashta Sakhis. We always see like in a lot of our temples, we have uh, Lalita on the side of uh, 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 Lord Krishna and Vishakha Devi is on the side of Radha Rani. But they, but they both are, even amongst the Ashta Sakhis, they both are the most prominent. So Vishakha Sakhi is one of them and Vishakha expands into Viraja River. And Viraja, so once the past time happened that Viraja and Krishna, they both were associating together and Krishna had placed Sridama at the gates of the Kunja where they were associating together to tell, so as to like alert him or to stop anyone from entering when he was associating with um, Viraja. But yes, she rather comes to know about this. And somehow like there is a whole big story connected to that a whole pastime. So Radharani sees Viraja and Lord Krishna together and she gets very angry and she actually curses Viraja that you will go to the material world in the form of a river. And Viraja becomes very uh, upset and she comes to Lord Krishna and tells that uh, this is what has happened. What do I do? So Krishna tells her, don't worry, don't worry. Go to the river, go, uh, go become a river and go to the material world and purify everyone with your waters there. I will personally come to the material world and perform several pastimes in your water. So this is how uh, our beloved Yamuna, she came again. It's by the grace of Radharani that she came to this material world so that Krishna could perform several of his pastimes over there. And uh, we can, till date, we have the benefit of taking a dip in her holy waters and uh, purifying, and we get purified of our sins. So if you see in this verse, in verse number 50, the first verse, we see that uh, Yamuna has her own qualities, but as, as I mentioned earlier, you know, that there are certain qualities which they acquire, which might seem unnatural to them, like, for example, qualities like of which you might consider are under the modes of, say, uh, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Obviously, Yamuna Devi is beyond, beyond all of these because she's an eternal associate of Krishna. But you see, like, she's exhibiting these kind of qualities so as to enhance the pastimes of Krishna. For example, if you see the word Gambhira, the second uh, line, the first word in the second line of verse number 50, Gambhira, Gambira is serious. This is how devotees are. They're always very serious. They have a lot of depth in them. 
Then the next word is Javormi. So Urmi are the waves and Java is forceful, forceful waves, very powerful, full of power, almost like in the modes of passion. And Fenila, the last word, Fenila is foam. She had a lot of foam because of so much of downpour of rain coming from the uh, sky. And this foam, foam is considered something of like in the mode of ignorance because foam is like one of the, it's considered like an impure kind of an item which comes on the reverse. And even if you see saints and sages, whenever they go to a river, if they see a foam, they clear it aside and then they sip or take a dip from the waters. Even in the next line, we see that, you know, we, we see that it's bhayanak. Okay, bhayanak is like, it's fiercely spread, you know, like she's spread. So in one sense, how the acharyas interpret it is that they are spread in the sense they have a big heart. They're very compassionate. That's how they are spread. They're spread in their mercy. And avrita, uh, avrita sata, so by whirling waves, so that's again in passion. And akula is agitated. Somewhere you see like some rivers, they are, somewhere they're deep, somewhere they're less, you know, they're less deep. So it's like, you know, up and down, up and down in agitation. So that's again in ignorance. Again, these are just qualities that Yamuna Devi has taken upon herself just for the time being to enhance the pastimes of Krishna. And then we see something interesting that Margam Dada Sindur Eva Shriyapate. So we see that as the ocean had given way to Lord Ramchandra, in the same way, Yamuna Devi gives way to Vasudev so that he can carry Krishna, baby Krishna from Mathura to Gokul. And why does she do this? Why does she give way? So there are several reasons uh, for this and all of them are like very sweet and amazing. I mean, you just have to look at the depth of the Acharya's realizations, you know, it's amazing. So one of, one of the reasons why Yamuna gives way to Vasudev is because the rivers are considered as the wife of the ocean. So the wife always follows the path of her husband. So a river, so Yamuna Devi thought that just as the ocean had given way to Lord Ram, in the same way, I should also give way to Vasudev so that my Lord Krishna can go on the other side and perform his pastimes there. Yamuna Devi also thought that Lord Ram wanted to cross the ocean in Treta Yuga to find Mother Sita, but the ocean was an obstacle. So similarly, Krishna is also very anxious to meet his devotees, specifically the gopis, the cowherd girls of Raja. So I don't want to be punished. I don't want to be an obstacle in my Krishna's pastimes. So see, these are the kind of thoughts that are going on in Yamuna's mind. She wants to facilitate Krishna's pastimes as much as possible. Yamuna also knew that with time, Krishna will, you know, as a child, uh, Nand Baba, Yashoda Maya will come to the waters of Yamuna. They will bathe him over there. And once he grows a little bit more big, he's going to perform various sports with his friends over there. And even when he grows more to his Keshore Leela, he's going to perform several pastimes in the river, in, in her waters with the gopis. So she's like, let me give way now, because if, if by chance if Vasudev gets scared, you know, with so much of this huge waves of, uh, you know, in my waters, then he might actually step back and, you know, go back all the way to Mathura. Then Krishna won't be able to go to Gokul. He won't be able to perform all these pastimes. So I need to give way so that my Krishna can perform his pastimes with his other devotees in my water. So I can facilitate his pastimes with his devotees in my waters. And most importantly, Yamuna was feeling intense separation from Krishna. So when Vasudev was just walking towards Gokul uh, over the waters with one pointed determination to save Krishna from Kamsa, Krishna mercifully touched Yamuna with his foot. So the waters of Yamuna also became a bit calm. Uh, her swelling became less and Yamuna became calm and even Vasudev was able to cross. <clears throat> now, if we go to verse 51, um, Nanda Vrajam Shorer Upetya Tatratan. Okay. So in this verse, we see, uh, so Yamuna is dividing the land from Mathura and Gokul. And Nanda Maharaj, uh, Nanda Vrajam, so Nanda Vrajam is translated in this verse, in verse 51, as the village or the house of Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda Baba is the king of Raj, he's Rajpati. And Vasudev is addressed as Shore. Shore. Shore means brave. 
So even in an earlier verse, in verse number 47, if we look at verse number 47 also, uh, Shukdev Goswami addresses Vasudev as Shore. What is the verse? It is Tatastha Shore Bhagavat Prachoditaha. So you see, this is the second time Vasudev is called brave. So the first time in verse 47, he was called brave was because he immediately, very bravely decided that I'm going to leave everything else, all my own desires and everything, and I'm just going to carry out the mission of Krishna. He wants to go out of this prison. I am going to take him out of this prison. So that is a brave act. This is a bravery, knowing that anything can happen, come suck and come anytime. Very bravely, he decided to carry out the instructions of Krishna. But the reason why he's called brave in this verse is because of the act that he's going to do now. So we'll see what that act is. What is the brave action that Vasudev uh, is going to do now? Okay, so um, we see that Vasudev, he reached the house of Nand Maharaj and he saw that all the cowherd men were fast asleep. Gopan Prasuptan. Prasuptan means they were sleeping. Supta is sleep, Suptan. They were sleeping. Upalabhya Nidraya. So Upalabhya is Deva, and he understood that they were in deep sleep. Okay, and lest that, and that they get up from their sleep, you know, he was going in very carefully. Gopal Champu, the a work written by Shirajiv Goswami, mentions that he went straight to Yashoda Bhavane. Okay, it's in this verse is mentioned as Yashoda Shayane, but so Shayane is the bed and he went first to Yashoda's Bhavan, Yashoda Maya's Bhavan. And he placed his sutam. If you see the, the first word of line number three, Sutam Yashoda Shayane Nidhayatat. Sutam. Sutam means he placed his child. So Sutam is Krishna, but he's not specifically called Krishna because yeah, his name giving ceremony hasn't happened yet. He's just appeared and he's just been taken across the river. So it's just called he placed his child on the bed of Yashoda Maya. And this was an amazingly brave act done by Vasudev. So who is Yashoda Maya? First, let's know who's Nand Baba. Nand Baba is Vasudev's best friend and Yashoda Maya is Nand Baba's wife. So imagine you're going in your best friend's wife's room in the middle of the night when everyone is asleep. You're not just going to her room, you're going to her bed, knowing that she's sleeping over there. And imagine if he would have been caught doing this, it would have been an utter disgrace for him for the rest of his life. It would have been something as a matter of, you know, like a huge dishonor. But he took this risk. Why? To carry out the mission of the Lord. So he walked straight in another person's wife's uh, bedroom and he touched her bed and he placed his own child on the bed of Yashoda Maya. So this is why he's called Shorer. So in the same way, uh, I just want to ask, does anyone, can anyone give one more other example of someone who has done another kind of same brave act on a similar lines? If anyone would like to answer. Something that would have been considered like, oh, okay, disgraceful or whatever, but. Gopis, Gopis, they left their houses to uh, enjoy the dance with Krishna. Okay, yes, that's, that's, that's a very good example. Any other example? I'm thinking about the time when Gopis offered the dust of their feet for the Lord. Mm, okay, something about a man going somewhere a person in a male body going in a female's room or something of that sort. It's a bit far-fetched, but just wanted to know. Lord Shiva? Lord Shiva did this when? Okay, Lord Shiva, but in which form? Okay, let me put it that way. Let me make it a bit easy. <laughs> Lord Shiva, uh, he goes to visit uh, baby Krishna in... Uh... Okay, but he didn't do anything that might be considered... Oh, okay. I think I know. <laughs> is it is it Lord Shiva chasing after uh, Mohini Murti? Mm. I mean, that was quite disgraceful. <laughs> okay. 
on a similar line so okay, these are these are a good examples okay. lord shiva goes as a gopi in the residence so that is there but, uh, okay okay in the interest of time i'm going to have to tell this <laughs> so we see hanuman <laughs> so hanuman when he was uh, hanuman ji when he was searching for mother sita he went in the rooms of all of the wives of ravan and he was inspecting all of them could this be mother sita could this be mother sita could this be mother sita and then so you see he's a brahmachari and he, obviously for a brahmachari it's it is completely unexpected but he did this again in the service of lord ram in the same way vasudev yes he's a grahastha so it's not maybe as scandalous as it would have been for a brahmachari but nonetheless it's it's another person's wife it's anyways it's against uh, the etiquette and the code so we have that we see some great examples we've seen hanuman ji we've seen vasudev two great uh, eternal associates of the lord do something extremely uh, kind of like you could kind of like in the mundane terms it could have been considered immoral but they did everything in the service of the beloved lords lord ram and lord krishna so you see uh, there is another very interesting thing to note over here that um krishna doesn't tell directly ever to vasudev to take him to gokul if you see in verse number 45 okay um let me see if i can oh, wait I, i don't think i have it open so anyways it might take me some time you see in verse number 45 of the same chapter chapter 3 krishna tells both he to his uh, vishnu as lord vishnu is telling devki and vasudev both of you husband and wife constantly think of me as your son but always know that i am the supreme personality of god and by thus thinking of me constantly with love and affection you will achieve the highest perfection returning home back to godhead he had just told indirectly that yes they we will be separated okay so vishwana chakravarti thakur very nicely comments that yes vasudev is eternally krishna's father but it's a hidden meaning that yes krishna is indirectly telling vasudev that for now i will have to go to gokul and after 11 years we'll have to meet again but for the time being we'll be separated so vasudev is inspired by the lord from within to take him to gokul so that he can continue his past times over there but if you see krishna had never told vasudev okay okay we might still understand okay put the child you know like okay krishna might tell okay place me in gokul but krishna never told him as such to take nand baba's child or yashoda maya's child like this the child that is just born to yashoda maya to take to take that child back to mathura but vasudev does this if you see in this verse in our verse that we are discussing verse number 50 the la, 51 the last line it said suta mupadaya punar grahanagat means he took he picked up the daughter an expansion of yog maya he took up yashoda maya's daughter an expansion of yog maya and then returned to his residence the prison house of kamsa and this is one thing which you know if if from a from a moral immoral perspective it might seem that how can anyone be so selfish you know okay you you're trying to save your own child at the expense of maybe getting someone else's child killed okay so Uh, there might be one thought you know uh, going in that direction but if you look at um the inner depth and the meaning of each and every action of the lord and his pure devotee we will realize that uh we are so grateful to our acharyas who have got these realizations who have realized these uh, these inner meanings these inner uh, realizations and they are sharing that realization with us through their commentaries So Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur specifically says that Vasudev did the right thing. And why was that? How is he right in taking another person's child just to save his own child? So we see in uh, chapter 2 from verses 10th canto chapter 2 verses 7 to 9 the supreme lord Krishna himself tells Yog Maya that you have to go to Gokul and take the child from Mother Devki's womb and place Uh, place the child under rohini's in in rohini's womb and after that you have to take birth as the child of yashoda maya and then i will come from mathura to gokul and indirectly he mentions that you have to go from gokul to mathura okay so why did the lord tell her to so the lord had told her to leave vraj 
He told her to leave Vrindavan. Means he told Yogamaya in the form of a child, you have to leave Vrindavan. And why is this? So I'm going to tell you totally three reasons. Um, there could be more, but three of which I have personally heard from my seniors. So the first reason is that so that Kamsa would not torture Devki and Vasudev anymore. So the eighth child was supposed to be a son, but if Kamsa would see that okay, the eighth child is a girl, then he might actually not kill her, because how can a girl kill a man? I mean, this was in those times when it was kind of like unheard of. <laughs> okay. When it was unheard of that uh, a girl can kill a man, okay. So we see that he th he was like, okay, fine, maybe the eighth child could be spared. The second reason is that how can a man kill a girl, okay? Culturally, like, okay, Kamsa would have thought that okay, it's a girl, okay, you know, he won't, she won't kill me. And second thing, he had at one point of time spared Devki's life, and Vasudev had also told him that see, you can't kill a woman who's your sister. So in the same way, culturally, he shouldn't have killed a girl, although later, because he's so demoniac, he tried to kill her. But the thought process was that, okay, fine, maybe being a man, he might not kill a girl and that to a baby girl. So in order to misguide Kamsa altogether, Yogmaya had to leave Vrindavan. But there is another very sweet and a very uh, deep reason why uh, Yogmaya actually took birth from Yashoda Maya. Okay, and the reason was that to create milk in the breast of Yashoda Maya. You see, um, so Vasudev Krishna, so we have two Krishnas born simultaneously. Uh, Vasudev Krishna appeared from the womb of Mother Devki and Vrajnandan Krishna appeared from the womb of Mother Yashoda along with Yogmaya. But the appearance of both of these Krishnas is very divine. They didn't have a normal delivery, like how a child is delivered in this, uh, in, you know, through a normal uh, process of giving birth. Okay. So first, how Krishna appeared is he, he appeared in the heart of uh, Nanda and Vasudev, and then they transferred, and then he was transferred from the mind, from the heart of Nanda and Vasudev to Yashoda and Devki, respectively. And even the birth, the appearance of Krishna was automatic. It wasn't through a normal, painful process that a woman goes through. And since the birth was a normal, uh, there, is, there is no chance of there being milk in the breast of Yashoda Maya. Okay. So, so that there might be one normal delivery so that there could be milk in the breast of Yashoda Maya. That normal delivery happened through the birth of Yogmaya in the form of a girl child. So Yogmaya appeared in a normal way, like how a normal girl or a normal child is appearing. And so there was, so as, as, as you might know, you know, when, whenever a child is born, there is automatically milk forms in uh, the breast of a mother. So if a child is born mentally, then there is no milk. So to create milk, Yogmaya had to take birth. And now her work was done. So as so that, that is one of the reasons. And why did Krishna want milk to be created in the breast of Mother Yashoda so that he could experience and taste the love, the devotion, the deep patsalya bhav of Mother Yashoda by drinking her milk? A mother's milk is not normal. It is blood mixed with her love that transforms into milk. So the milk is a pure love and devotion of, uh, of a mother towards a child. And especially for Mother Yashoda, it's her devotion towards the Supreme Lord, towards uh, the complete object of her love and affection, Krishna. So this is the explanation given by our great Acharyas, uh, by Jeev Goswami. And this is given by in the commentary. So we see that this is the reason of uh, Yogmaya appearing as the child of uh, Yashoda Maya. And this was the reason also why she had to leave Vrindavan. So there is absolutely nothing wrong in on the part of Vasudev in taking, a, you know, like another person's child, specifically Yogmaya here, to be taken to Mathura and maybe given in the hands of Kamsa. Because her work in Gokul was now done. And her work in Mathura was still remaining. She had to even warn Kamsa that you fool, you know, like the child who's a, who, the child who you're trying to kill has already taken birth. And this had to happen because yes, Kamsa's evil deeds had to reach to a level and then only can Krishna uh, kill him. So see, you see, there is a whole 
grand scheme of events that is supposed to take place because of which uh, because of which this action had to take place this brave act of asadev had to take place so when i when i personally heard of these uh, commentaries from my seniors uh, some years back i realized how how an insignificant jeeva am i that i try to find faults in the lord and more worse than that as i try to find faults in the actions of his devotees so i am very grateful to shila prabhupad to uh, the previous acharyas to my seniors who have mercifully even given like all of they had themselves have read these commentaries and they have shared it with me over the time i mean i've been hearing them so if ever we are bewildered we have to take the guidance of our seniors so as to understand the leelas of krishna and the leelas of his devotees and one should be very careful to study scriptures under a pure devotee of krishna otherwise there will be a huge chance of misunderstanding any of these past times and as and when we go more further in canto 10 there will be like so many activities so many leelas of krishna which are so bewildering to um, a common a uh, mundane moralist you know he might be like how is krishna able to do this how how are gopis how can they do this you know like there are so many things like that we so many past times but we can only understand it fully and realize it when we uh have the blessings of great acharya specifically for our shila prabhupad that's why even shila prabhupad told us we have to keep reading canto 1 and canto 2 again and again and again and specifically read bhagavatam in an order not jump realize and understand who is krishna first what are his opulences his energies his potencies so i'm i'm very grateful to i mean this this verse particularly when 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 i saw that i had this verse i was like oh my god this can be such a it's it's a, it's a controversial thing no doubt it's a controversial thing to any person but luckily we we have um the experience and the realizations of our senior acharyas uh, because of whom we are able to understand everything in the right light and appreciate the devotees and their love towards krishna even more so i will uh, stop my class here sorry i went a bit over time but i will uh, we have just five more minutes so in case if anyone has any questions any um, comments any uh, thoughts please they can share it now yes uh, we have shikshashtak prabhu Hi Krishna, thank you very much. Um, I like your warning about trying to judge because when I first heard this, you know, I've heard the past time before, but uh, you don't you think how could he do that to his friend? How could he, you know, potentially kill the child of his friend's wife? And how did he know that he wouldn't notice? I mean, usually you would. think that yashoda would notice that she gave birth to a boy you know i mean so many things are don't make any sense from a logical point of view but uh like you said it's just a warning not to prejudge anything on the basis of logic and reason and um as as far as like taking the instruction of the acharyas they have a, another complete understanding i'm writing i'm reading right now the sir arthur darshini commentary on the bhagavatam by vishnu chakravarti and it's just so good uh it's so deep and so we have to hear from them first and not try to judge the devotees because that that could even be offensive you know to to think oh how could nan to do that or how could vasudev do that to his own friend So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. All the activities of pure devotees happen under the direction of yoga maya and yoga maya herself does everything under the direction of Krishna. So ultimately whatever a pure devotee does is under the um under the instruction under the guidance under the under the will of Krishna. And that's how we should always understand it. Yes, Adi Purush Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. I can. Yeah. A very interesting uh the the subject matter first of all you perfectly explain the grand scheme of things and how things done according to krishna's will make everything perfect thank you so much there's one point about the you were mentioned bathing in the jamuna and how it has a counteracting sins i've heard from shilpa that 
when we bathe in the Ganges, the simple reactions are taken away. Simple mm. rea reactions. And that when we bathe in the Jamuna, the desire <clears throat> to engage in sinful activity is taken away. In other words, not only is the debt taken away, but the tendency to accumulate debt by engaging in inappropriate activity is purified. That's a little different refinement, different from bathing in the Ganges. And then it says bathing in the dust of the lotus feet is a spiritual master. Not only is there no more debt, not only is there a tendency not to accumulate more debt, but by bathing in the dust of the spiritual master, we're inspired in devotional service to Krishna, which is the, you know, besides not doing anything bad, <laughs> actually our love for Krishna is awakened. So Krishna arranges these different degrees of, of purification. And it's, it's wonderful to want to acknowledge sinful activity and want to wash away the, the reaction. And it's wonderful to want to be, become purified. So we don't want to do that anymore. But then until we, until we come, until we come to the point of engaging in devotional service to Krishna, it's not a complete purification. I'm sorry to talk, talk so long. I'll go to Sishul Prabhupada. That was a very good point. Like even today we see a lot of people go to the rivers, uh, to all these holy rivers like Ganga, Yamuna, just more as a matter of formality, you know, okay, our sins will get destroyed. But they don't realize that the seed, as you said, the bija, the tendency, it's still there in them. Hmm. And that can only be destroyed when you serve your devotees. Right. Uh, it's also mentioned in uh, Canto 3, uh, when um, Prabhupada mentions in one of the purports, you know, when, Vidur, when uh, Vidurji, when he's going to different places of pilgrimage, he's saying that, we shouldn't just be taking baths in holy rivers. The, important, the importance of going to holy places, associating with the devotees. Yes, no doubt. Uh, Ganga, Yamuna, they all have come on this earth just to purify all of these um, desires within our heart, uh, ultimately to kill it out. But yes, ultimately it's devotional service. And But by bathing in these holy waters, little by little, we are getting Sukriti, the devotional Sukriti by which eventually we will have that fortune of meeting with our spiritual master or an acharya like Prabhupada. It, it, everything builds up, like how we just have prasad and, you know, like having prasad over many lifetimes has come up to a point where we finally surrender to a pure devotee of Krishna. Surrender, and surrender, yeah. Same way, like bathing in holy rivers like Ganga, Yamuna, make us come to a point eventually with time. So yes, they have their own importance also. We were uh, listening to Vaishya Shekhar Prabhu last night and he said that, he's speaking about Duryodhana. He hmm. said, um, uh, Krishna sent his messenger to Duryodhana and said, listen, you know, don't, why don't you give the Pandavas their due? You know, your son is misdirected and he's, he's, he's selfish and evil and, and what he's doing is wrong. Don't condone this. Please don't condone this. And then Duryodhana said, well, I know you're coming from Krishna. And I know what you say is true but I just can't do it. So <laughs> it's one thing to have the association and the instruction of the spiritual master. Another thing to say, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to follow his instruction. Yes. Very nice point. Very nice point. Oh, glory to Prabhupada. Wonderful. Thank wonderful you. class. Amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, does anyone else else have any organizations? I think the curtains could open at any moment. So Nirvika Devi Ki Jai. Thank you, Shila Shumad Prabhupada. Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Thank you. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Morning program live pro format. Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare have Krishna. a wonderful day, everybody. Yes. Love you all. Hare Krishna.